I'm a little curious, like, like you're talking about all your different businesses and stuff. And, and you say that you spend a lot of time just kind of pacing and thinking, mm -hmm. it seems like, like you have more time. And I'm trying to get like a feel for like, where does the time go? How, I mean, you drive around in your car, you, you sit places, I'm sure like admire views. I always see you, like you're in mountain ranges and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, you um, yeah, I mean, there's, I don't really know, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it's definitely like there's meetings, obviously. Um, I'm on the phone with my brother a lot cause he, I kind of do a lot of thinking and then he does a lot of work, I guess you could say. Um, so we kind of work together with some business stuff. What kind of business yeah. stuff are you working with? Yeah, it, you're, you're uh, holding something. You're holding yeah, something back. Yeah. What is it? No, I'm we, trying to figure out. What if it you is. don't want to talk about it, you don't have to talk about it's it. I mean, stuff. just like a little bit. I mean, I'll just say like, yeah, we have some YouTube channels, uh, some blogs, um, and then also, yeah, a lot of my time is spent like finding places to put money. I guess so. Like, I don't like pumping all of my money into the S and P 500. So I'm looking for new investments. Sometimes, you know, there's like angel investments mm -hmm. that get pitched to us. Um, but you know, more so looking for cash businesses that I can invest into. So I'm probably investing into another media company uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited about that. Probably can't talk about it like yeah, uh, sure. here right now. Um, and yeah, just like putting money into different projects and kind of like setting things up. Like we'll have some random business idea and be like, all right, we want to do this, but we don't have any more time to go and like try to build this business. So we'll just set up like a project basically like, and we'll say, okay, we'll put 25 grand into this over the next 12 months and kind of just let it run. And then it should be profitable by that end of the 12 month period. Now you say media company and you say YouTube channels. Can you, can you tell us the YouTube channels or like, I don't how about the I'm niche? How no, about the I don't niche? think uh, uh, I don't think so. So, okay. So if you can't tell us that the channel, is it that you're you're running another channel or you you have some sort of input on another channel that? Yeah. So like we, I'm split? not on the channels, like, right? Because right. I like being behind the scenes. Yeah. So so we'll just hire somebody to to make the content. Um, you know, script writers, editors, and they'll just do all of that. And it's kind of just like we'll just say like, all right, here's what we're going to do next. Here's the next 20 videos and go ahead and go make those. Wow. Um, yeah. And we just let them marinate for a while, like, you know, half a year or something. How have any of them taken off? Maybe. <laughs> I am so wow. curious. I, hey, you don't oh, have yeah, to say, I you don't have it. to say that's, that's I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit after, okay. after the podcast. That's, that's awesome, man. Congratulations yeah. on Thanks. that. That's something that I wanted to do originally before I, I, even started making YouTube videos, I wanted to do exactly that. I wanted to invest in a YouTube channel and have some just oversight. I, I, I thought a lot of channels back in like 2013 could have done so well had they just had like a business mindset. Yeah. And these were a yeah. lot of channels that just, they had really good content, but they had no direction in terms of like how to monetize it. They were really good at being in front of the camera. They just needed someone to take control and be like, this is how we should structure it. We're going we're gonna to do this and make a lot of money, but to split it. And what was holding a lot of people back was that they were still working jobs. Like the mm -hmm. channel was not making any money. So they yeah. couldn't give it a hundred percent. They were like, you know, working a job half the day and then like going and doing this. And it just didn't turn yeah. out the same. I wanted people to do it full time. Yeah. And I guess that's where it kicks in where it's like, if you're so confident in it. You just say, all right, I'll like, I'll pay you. Like I'll, I'll make sure that you can quit your job and yeah. do this full time. That's a bigger gamble, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, people do that sometimes. Wow. All right. Last question on this before we move on. Would this have been a channel that maybe I would have stumbled across? Like maybe I had seen a video or like. Probably not. No, actually. No, no definitely not. Okay. I'm so, that's awesome. I'm so congratulations. Yeah, though, congratulations. Like, that's oh, thanks. Yeah. That's so cool. It's pretty passive, yeah. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, pass it's passive for me, not really for my brother that much. Um, like we, we, we're, we're really good business partners. And I'm really happy that like we have such a good dynamic where it's like um, not I don't know if this is a good analogy, but like, let's say if like, if a business is a car, like I'm kind of the one steering the wheel and then he's the, he's, he's the engine. Like he's the one yeah. doing day-to-day -day operations, like really like making it work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, I don't know, maybe I should pick up the slack a little bit, but. Wow. Yeah. Would you say then that's like surpassed your own channel in terms yeah. of like income? Yeah. Jeez. Wow. Like, that is so cool. I am I am shocked that uh, that you're not just like dancing around about this and like screaming at the top of a mountain. This is incredible. You're I don't see why I would though. Why, why would I you're publicize? The, you're the, because you're the first one that, uh, that I've talked to in the entire finance niche that has managed to build a second channel outside of their own and manage it behind the scenes. The 
first person I've seen to do that. See, it's just impressive that, to me that, that like big. that you were able to do it with yourself, right? And then you go and you apply all of the knowledge that you had learned and you weren't a part of the equation at all as far as like using your current celebrity to grow the I channel. Know. Yeah, that's, but that's I think the hardest part of, of growing a channel is, is like understanding the algorithm. So I kind of got that part down by building my own channel and then you know what works, you know what doesn't work um, going forward. So it's easier to just kind of like, you know. No, I'm sure yeah. finding the, the right personality to be in front of the camera that's is very important. Yeah, very difficult. Yeah. And if you guys notice, sometimes I'll post like things on my story with like Google Forms of like, hey, anybody looking for like freelance work? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. So I just build like a big bank of like hundreds of people who can wow. like be script writers, editors, be like people on camera. Um, yeah. See, I'm, I'm in interested in just like the process, like extremely interested in the process behind like, I don't know how much of this you want to talk about. Like this to me is the most exciting thing that, that I think I've, I've talked about all day here, but like the process, be like what gave you the idea? Uh, like, and you don't have to reveal too much, but like also why you chose not to promote it through yourself. Like why you wanted to grow it organically and not like jumpstart it from the very beginning, how you found people, how you knew that someone was going to be good in front of the camera. Did you have to let people go in the meantime? Like, yeah, so I mean, um, I'll just bring people on as in, like independent contractors, try out a couple people, right, and then and then see how they do. Um, but I mean, so I really don't like I don't mind being on camera, but I'm not naturally an entertainer. I'm not naturally a speaker, so I really do prefer to work on things behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and there's just so much opportunity with with YouTube. Like if you have the uh, all right, so let's say you have 25 grand yeah. um, and you want to put it somewhere. You want to invest it somewhere without spending too much time on it. Uh, you can put it into the stock market, right? I feel like I'm already way overexposed to equities. Um, and you can put it into real estate, you can put it in other things, maybe grow 10% per year or something. But I just feel like with our understanding, and not to say like I have a superior understanding of YouTube and the you algorithm, do. but um, like I just realized that, you know, <clears throat> I could take 25 grand and instead of putting it in the stock market, put it into a new brand. And if that can turn 25 into say 250, like, you know, that's a better return than 10%. Yeah. So <clears throat> that was kind of why we started doing that. How and you, also yeah. diversifying like right. a lot out of the finance yeah. niche, obviously still People beholden get canceled to every YouTube, day, you know, you don't wanna, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, that was why, that's why we, we started these. Wait, really? No, no, not like the primary <laughs> reason, but it was definitely no. like, I was like, I don't wanna have all my eggs in one basket. That's true. And I think the worst, I, I, I feel so bad for people when, like they're an influencer, they're doing well, and either like, you know, something happens, whatever. I mean, usually it's their own fault anyway. Um, but there's also times where it's like they start to slip, like their their videos are not as good. People don't watch them anymore. And you can just see like they're still trying to make it like because they quit their job. They're doing YouTube full time. Two or three years later, they're not as popular. So now they're barely making enough money to make ends meet. And like they have to do it because they yeah. don't know what else to do. Um, I, I feel like a lot of YouTubers get boxed in and influencers in general. And they're like, I have to keep doing this to keep my money going so I can pay my bills. Um, and I, I didn't want to be in that position. Wow. How, how do you know someone's going to be good in front of the camera? Do you just test things out until eventually like you're like, that's, yeah. that's our yeah, person? You gotta, yeah, you just got to test out. People. Are you afraid? Here's a uh, weird question. Are you afraid that um, the person you have in front of the camera is going to feel like they're irreplaceable after a certain amount of time and then they're going to demand an amount that uh, really eats into the, the bottom line? Um, no, that's why you put different people on the channels. Are we talking multiple, so multiple channels or one yeah. person per channel? No, like multiple people per channel. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And th and that way it's, it's not like it's, yeah, because I can see how that'd be a problem. If it was like one person and they're making all the videos, then it's like people just associate that person with the, with the brand. Yeah. So that could be problematic. That's really smart. You know what it reminds me of? And I'm not, I'm not saying Kids this react. Is the, no, I'm not saying no. this is what you're doing. Uh, but right now the Darman style video. What's that? <laughs> what? Really? Darman? I can't tell uh, you. Maybe you're playing this. And no, like no, we, he, we got, he doesn't know no, what No, no, I genuinely don't know what this is. Are you he serious? Makes, he makes skits, basically. Like okay. really high production quality skits that are supposed to teach you some sort of lesson. A lesson. And they're super cliche, super just like typical. And uh, yeah. But oh Very my successful. gosh. So Darman on Facebook was getting like over, I think it was like a billion views a month. A billion mm -hmm. a month on Facebook. And you know on Facebook, the monetization is like through the roof. Yeah. Darman's probably making like $50 million a year, I'm guessing, just from wow. like Facebook. His YouTube channel blew up. Yeah. When his YouTube channel blew up, and all of his videos, by the way, are getting like Mr. Beast style views, and yeah. he's posting like multiple times a week. And uh, that inspired a whole bunch of copycats 
who realize that format's working. And then the copycats go in and then their videos just blow up because it's mm -hmm. just like these short little quick skits that are easily shareable. And the audience is like, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your uncle, or whatever. They'll boomers. send you those videos. What? Boomers. It is. But, but, you know, but you know what they're doing? You know what the boomers are doing that uh, millennials are not? Sharing. Millennials rarely will send a video to one another. But meanwhile, it's like. Videos, right? What? Well, millennials don't share videos. Dude, I not get inundated much. with TikToks from people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get TikToks, so many TikToks. 100% TikToks. Not YouTube videos, though. But on Facebook, it's so easy to be like, you know, Jerry, come check this out. And you know, it's a dark Jerry can not. Can I don't know. Young people not have the name Jerry. Yeah, I, I know don't a lot know. of Jerry's. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I, saying it's. It seems like that content is is more easily shareable. Yeah.